This is the Moon Smart Focus System for Moonlighting Industries. This is a Synity Gear News video supported by B and H and CVP. Hey guys, Grammy Miller Sheldon here from CineD.com. Welcome to Cine Gear 2023 here at Paramount Studios. I'm at the Moonlighting Industries booth and I'm joined by Michelle. How's it going today? Very well, thank you very much. Now this is a multi-part product that is very, very cool. So we're going to take our time, really walk through this. If you are an AC working in the industry, this is going to be a particularly interesting video for you. So at a high level, what are we looking at here? So what we're looking at here today is a AI multi-person rangefinder, basically. So what we do is that we take a look at what's going on in front of the camera and showing the distance of every actor's eyeballs to the first AC. Very cool. And you need a couple of different hardware components. You need a, the software component. What are the different elements here of the system? That is correct. Yeah, we uh, utilize our brain, which is a, uh, uh, basically an, a very advanced computer. And then we have our sensor, which is a camera in the front, a stereoscopic uh, camera. And then stereoscopic, like maybe 3D, if you've ever filmed 3D, similar technology? Yeah, it, it could be used for that, absolutely. But we use it for its depth capabilities. So uh, for us, it was important that we have a, a sensor that's not limited by, um, let's say, environmental factors. So if there is smoke in front of you, or if there is a windshield, our system will not just shut down. It will keep going and showing you the distance, even through all those things. Now that might be a good uh, spot to start. So with sort of LiDAR based uh, laser systems, it, it requires a certain beam angle to work. Is it a similar sort of situation here? Uh, not really, no. Uh, the only thing we require is that the camera is uh, mounted parallel to the lens, so at the same plane. Uh, but it can be all the way in front of the lens or behind it, that's, that's not an issue. Um, so it's not that sensitive in that space. Uh, it's more like it's looking at the scene like you are. So if you can identify a, p a person, it can identify a person. Well, let's unpack that a little bit. So I've used different software that is detecting people, say, usually like through the eyes. Is that how you're working too? So we have algorithms that uh, calculate where the eyes are. They're, we're looking at what is a human. It's essentially a human meatbag detector. Uh, so it's looking what is a human and then identifying where the eyes are. But it's not using facial recognition or anything like that due to privacy concerns. So it's just literally human meatbag detection and then eyeballs from that. Now, the, the I guess, the complication there in the past for me using other different types of technologies are the moment where two humans sort of interact in front of each other, it's interpolating where which human you want to be. You know what I mean? When people stack. So are you able to handle that issue? Uh, yeah, I'd say we're fairly good with it right now. Uh, of course, when two people are wearing like very similar clothing and it's starting to like mesh together, that could be an issue, absolutely. So it's, it's not a system that you turn on and lean back and don't do your job. You still have to be very vigilant, of course. But we, uh, we're, we update this system every month, so it just gets better and better. So with the first version, 2021, that was a huge problem. But uh, we have updated quite a bit since then, so I'd say it's a small issue now. So uh, unless you have two very very similar people merging together. It shouldn't be uh, too much of an issue anymore. And this is the Moon Smart Focus version 2, correct? And that's primarily software side changes, but the hardware is mostly the same as the version 1 from 2021? Actually, it's the opposite. So oh, It's all hardware changes. OK, great. So, um, with the first version, that was just a quick test for us to get something out to ACs so they can start telling us what their issues are, what they want, and all that. So we, we build the system after feedback that we collect. And that system was quite bulky and big, and it was not really supposed to go on actual sets, but keep, people kept asking for it, so we sent it out. And the main thing people were asking for is, like, can it get smaller? So that's what we've done with this so-called version 2. We just still call it Moon Smart Focus. It's the same thing. The software is the same. It's just getting better and better. Hardware-wise, we have changed a little bit. We've made it smaller to make sure that this is an acceptable size. And uh, weight-wise, trying to find what the optimum weight is. And this is going to be the final size. The only thing that's left now is for us to decide on final finishing for the body. And then tell me how it integrates. So I mean, we you know we have a Sony uh, Venice here. 
and you're using sort of an airy follow focus system. Can you tell me about the process of integrating the Moon Smart Focus with sort of the airy follow focus standard here? Absolutely. So uh, I'm holding an Airy High 5 here, and that's integrated actually to the camera next to me right now, which is an Airy 35. With this Sony Venice here, we have a uh, Preston HU4 connected to it. And it's quite simple. Any system that can accept the Syndicate protocol, we can uh, access. So we uh, build custom cables that go from our system, translate into whatever we have on the camera. In this case, we have an MDR, so it's a, ca it's a cable that's Moon MDR cable. And if you have an Airy, it's an, uh, either an Airy 35 or RIA 1 cable or an l -cube Cube 1 cable. So if the system is able to do Cinetape, we're able to integrate to it, which means we're able to integrate to basically everything. What other uh, manufacturers' follow focus systems uh, does your system play well with? You know, uh, there's, a, there's a few out there. Preston jumps to mind. Anyone else? Yes. So we do work with basically all of them. So Airy, Preston, uh, the Teradex system, um, Tilta. Um, our vision is that we should not limit focus pullers or actually filmmakers in general to what type of technology are, they're allowed to use with us. We want to be open for everyone. So we're Swedish, we try to be friends with everyone. So if, if they want to work with us, we're more than happy to play with them and make sure that our technology integrates well to them, theirs. Now walk me through the various capabilities specifically on the uh, app side, the software side. So what are, you, what are you seeing? I had a chance to play with it and I saw the various distances between a group of say about three people. Uh, but beyond that, can, can you, you know, pick the nearest person, the farthest person and just make that decision? Or what, what other data points are you able to see? Absolutely. Customization and uh, making sure that we adapt to your workflow is very important to us. So with our system, you're able to, let's say, either do a semi-automatic mode, which means that you're getting data automatically, regardless of who it is, it's the nearest person. So if you have an actor that moves uh, uh, back a little bit and another person is nearest person, we're going to track that person. So it's the nearest person. You can switch that to nearest, second nearest, all the way up to fifth nearest. Uh, or you can actually press the label of the specific person you want to track and will keep tracking that person regardless of where they're at in, in space unless they're completely occluded um, and it will stick to that. Um, that's the two AI modes we have, so to speak. Then we have other algorithms that are not necessarily AI, but they are um, pixel... Um, uh, followers, so we have uh, Cinetape mode, can, you can say, which is um, um, we take a look at what is closest to the camera, regardless of what it is. If it's a human, a coffee cup, or a cat, and you can just draw out a little frame, whatever's inside that frame will be tracked closest to camera. You can manipulate that, put it wherever you want. Instead of having to physically move horns, for example, you just do it through the app. You can set several of those. So if you have a talking bear camera left and a talking chinchilla camera right, you can have two different frames. Uh, because our AI will not be able to recognize that as humans, of course, so you can use that instead. And then we have our last uh, mode, which is object mode, which is literally press anywhere. The pixel you press, you will get the distance to that pixel. And um, it's, it's um, regardless of where it is, uh, so to speak. So it's basically a digital um, measuring tape. So walk me through what's included in the kit. You mentioned off camera that it includes a uh, iPhone, which I have questions about. So what's included and then how much is the cost of, say, your base bundle? So yeah, we only have one price. There's only one system, so to speak. So it's twenty-four thousand it, dollars. It, it's a complete kit. You'll get uh, the Moon Brain, the Moon Eyes, all the cabling needed, so you can connect it to Airy or Preston, um, and also an iPhone. And the reason for us including the iPhone and people not using their own smartphones is that even if you put your phone on flight mode, uh, you can still get notifications like time notifications and stuff like that. And if you're doing a shot, and it's a crucial shot, and just as you're about to make a change on the iPhone, you get a notification, actually accidentally press that, it takes you out of the whole experience, and you lost a shot. And obviously, people are going to blame Moon for that. So we want to control the environment as much as possible, so we give the phone to focus pullers. So they get a phone. Right now, it's an iPhone 12 mini. It's, uh, it's not something we guarantee. It's just the optimum phone that works with it for that when you buy the system. Um, and, and that's our way of limiting that risk, mit mitigating risk, basically. Now, the, the, the price point's interesting to me because it is, I would say, sort of on the premium side. You're kind of in a category more or less by yourself, in a sense, right? Not a lot of other players out there in the space. So, you know, that can be a, a potentially heavy lift if you're already a Preston owner op, if, if you're working with the Aries system owner op. 
Do you see this uh, having legs in the rental market as well? So, so walk me through that. Who's the perfect user for this? Because you become sort of a uh, focusing machine, I guess, with your equipment as well. Yeah. So initially, we would say that uh, First AC would be our main target audience and rentals for them. But uh, after now having it out on productions for three years, we, we now see it as a production tool. Because with this, the First AC is able to work so much faster and so much more confidently that for every camera that has a moon mounted on it, back home in Scandinavia, that camera over course of a production will produce 10 to 25% more sharp material. So it kind of pays for itself quite quickly in the sense that you rent it out for like $500 a day, roughly, and it's gonna get pretty quick to get that back because productions will love this tool. You as a first AC will never have to hear the words one more for focus again with this system. Also, we believe that um, to be able to keep this grassroots connection to people, we need to be a, a low quantity, high quality item. And to be able to keep that, we have to have the price point at a point where we can keep developing and keep making sure that the tool is the best tool for the first AC. Um, and that's why we decided to go that route. Um, and uh, so far, uh, we have a lot of happy customers, so to speak. I'd say we, we haven't had a return yet. Really? Okay, see, that's, that's a very cool comment to hear because I got to say, the first AC is a position where if you lose confidence in a device, like, there's no going back. It's gone. No more moons on this production. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, and that's uh, in the beginning when uh, the system was a little bit more unstable, uh, we either heavily rebated, uh, sorry, that's uh, Swedish, discounted it or gave it out free. But now we're confident in the system and uh, it pays for itself now, basically. Really interesting. So the version two of the hardware, it's it's shipping now, available now, you can pick one up? Yeah. Yes. So right now we are shipping units. Um, so um, we're going through chronologically whoever has ordered first and like trying to match that out. And uh, we are sending out what, what you'd be calling Moon Smart Focus 2. We call it Moon Smart Focus. And currently it's all um, um, carbon uh, fiber, I think it is right now. And we're shipping that out. And then we're just going to update those with the final finishing later on when it's done later this year at, at no cost for the people who bought it now. Final question, um, service and support. Super important thing. What do I do if, you know, something just breaks off because of life, you know? Yeah, and I mean, it's film production. That will happen. Regardless if you as a first AC are uh, very careful, somebody might drop something on the camera and there you go. So uh, we have a service center in, uh, in Los Angeles uh, servicing the whole North America, and that would be the camera division. Uh, so you don't have to send anything to Sweden, wait for it to be fixed and send it back. Uh, it's going to be all local here. Uh, service is very important to us and uh, usually right now we're so low quantity uh, that I'm able to physically myself be the support center, but we're building out FAQs and video tutorials and all that to take the edge off of the whole thing. And uh, most of the issues people run into we're able to fix quite quickly. And hardware fixes is uh, repairs uh, or just switcheroos. And mostly it's about uh, dropping the eyes, for example, because that's an optical sensor. So you'll just have to switch that out. Very cool. Uh, well, Michelle, thank you so much for taking a few minutes with us here today. A fascinating, fascinating system. I mean, uh, can we send folks to your website, to your socials for more information? Absolutely. So moonsmartfocus.com is uh, our website, and uh, you'll find a lot of information there, but mostly our Instagram, Moon Smart Focus. And if you want to try it out and you're in uh, the United States right now, I'd say Los Angeles is the place to go. Camera Division just purchased nine units. So uh, they're actually our main uh, purchaser now in the whole world. So uh, they'll be able to give you some demos and all there. Well, thank you so much for walking us through the Moon Smart Focus system updates. Very, very, very cool. That's it for us here at the Moonlighting Industries booth at CineGear 2023. Stay tuned for more continuing coverage from the show. Bye, guys.